One of our other models is that people who are in our programs have unlimited use of the simulator at no cost. Let me say that again to all you financial people. Unlimited, no cost. In the long run, you make money. You make money because if you have an engaging program that a learner can get in, get scored, get better, practice, you have now played on that AAA personality to become the best pilot they can before they ever get in the airplane, and the time you spend in the airplane is significantly less covering that same maneuver. Then you can use the remaining extra time you have to do the things that you always wanted to do, which was develop deeper levels of understanding, better awareness, do the cross countries that you wanted to do, give them things that challenge them, teach them the things that you wanted to do because they're picking up the basics very quickly. We use the simulator to teach ATC. I've had some people complain about this, you know, the product at trade shows. And if you think about ATC, even for English speakers, this is learning a foreign language. And people feel uncomfortable doing that. Successful people feel uncomfortable in situations that they haven't mastered. And what does the device do? It teaches them vocabulary, it teaches them structure, and then it does the thing that they need, which is repetition. And it does that all perfectly every time, each time so that the learner gets to develop those skills without being observed, without condescending looks or approvals or nonverbal communication with the instructor going, no, no, no. You know, when they say that, it means this. And by the way, we attempt to teach real ATC, not exactly the slang that you hear around most Texas airports, so that they are prepared to fly outside the country, which means anywhere outside the borders of Texas. Okay. If this device overcomes the problem that instructors have doing road and repetition, then this is the kind of, exactly the kind of device we need to use. And you need to use it in the industry so that your instructors are doing what they're very good at, and that is being coaches and mentors for the customers. We also need devices that present a lesson, the, the learner gets to practice the lesson, and the learner gets scored on the lesson, all within the confines of the device, all without ridicule, or outside intervention, or an impatient instructor who just doesn't understand why they can't get it as fast. The future is here for that, by the way, and is getting better. Avidon is the brand of choice for pilots who want innovative, easy-to-use avionics, and the new IFD 540 and 440 FMS GPS Navcoms set a new standard for ease of use and simplicity. As plug-and-play replacements for legacy 530 and 430 series navigators, the hybrid touch user interface of the IFD 540 and IFD 440 makes it much easier to access the information you want while reducing head down time and making flying more enjoyable. Now you have a choice, and the choice is easy, Avidyne. I was sitting around the flight room and, and we had a slow day and some instructors were using this program called um, For Something or Other, for pilots or for whatever, For Flight. And I said, oh, how's that work? And as it turns out, it worked really well. It worked so well, in fact, that all the instructors, me being the last because kicking and screaming, you know, I was the one, all use ForeFlight. And all of our customers now use ForeFlight because it's the program that gives them what they need when they need it. So if they're going to use this device in the cockpit, don't we have an obligation to teach them how to use that device in the simulator so they don't become distracted in the cockpit or use this device inappropriately, or find out that, yeah, you know what, on a hot summer day in Texas, flying some instrument practice, you really do need a leg strap on your iPad, I can assure you. These are all kinds of lessons that they can learn in the simulation device. And, and our challenge to you in the industry, what devices do you have do you, that you think would be beneficial to customers that they should learn as part of their primary training? And we'll be happy to test those for you. Is that cheating? I don't know. You used to have to do this, right, to come up with a speed, time, distance problem. Now you can use this. The FAA wouldn't let you use that in the test when I took my private pilot test. You know why? We didn't have it, okay? We didn't have iPads that we could use. We didn't have glass cockpits. You can talk all you want about the good old days, but this technology is here to stay, and we have an obligation to teach people how to use it correctly so it doesn't become a distraction or an accident in the cockpit. 
Welcome to the Aero News Network, the aviation world's most comprehensive news and information resource. Real-time, 24-7 online, audio, and video programming, where aviation has been getting updated for over a decade. Distributing over 11,000 stories, features, audio, and video programs every year, only ANN covers aviation and aerospace with this much depth, insight, and expertise. Check us out on the web at aero-news.net. Since January, we've, we've had 41 graduations. 20 of those have been private. Most of the others have been instrument, and we've had a couple of others, CFI, MEI, I, lots of little add-on ratings along the way. The stats for the private pilot, I found out, it's not the national average, it's not 62, it's more like 75. That's fine. Ours for our full-time customers is 38. When we add in our full-time and part-time customers, it's 42. And the median hours is 40. Good statistics by any means? As a statistician, I would say, well, if the combined rate, the combined hours for all the people doing privates is 42, and the median is 40, we got a pretty tight little group going on. So statistically, we have some validation. The problem with that, oh, by the way, there is a 97% first time pass rate. And I'm very displeased about that other 3%, just asking any instructors. But what does it really mean? It doesn't mean a thing. Because hours to getting a certificate is a nearly useless measure of the effectiveness of the training program. And it is not the thing that we need to study. What we need to evaluate very carefully is the number of events in a particular task it takes to master that task to a level of proficiency. And when we can measure what the number of events is to get that task to proficiency, we can focus in on all those things we've talked about, whether it's the material, whether it's the delivery method, whether it's the instructor, to reduce the number of events it takes to get to that same proficiency. Because when we can do that, we can then up the proficiency levels so they're well in excess of the requirements for a private pilot. So in the end, we have developed what I believe is a more capable pilot going out into the flying force. One issue I have statistically is the ratio, I didn't put it up here, of sim to aircraft hours is widely spread, which means I failed to lock that down. But we're in the midst of trying to do that right now. So can simulation make primary flight training easier, faster, and less expensive? And oh, by the way, better? The answer is yeah. And this is the part that ain't no rocket surgery. Of course it can. Okay. Is fixed time, fixed fee the way to go? I'd have to tell you right now, yeah. Eliminates a lot of problems and broken promises, by the way. Okay. What have we learned or what have I learned out of that? Well, if experience is knowing when you've made the same mistake a second time, you can quote me on this, Robert. You can honestly say I'm full of it. We learn something every single day in the laboratory. And then we look for ways to change either the material or the delivery methods to get us where we need to go. Are we ready to export this information? Sure, of course we are, and we promise to do that. But having the ingredients isn't enough, and Jeff's going to talk a little bit later about how we have to teach you the recipe as well. We're now measuring to proficiency with some granularity, and that granularity has to increase, but we're getting there very quickly. We have lots of work to do in developing real-world scenarios to challenge our learners' analytical skills and expose them to situations that they might likely be in the airplane. And we're just at the forefront of doing that. But the real question to you is, what do you want to study?